Uh, welcome to uh, the Hangout uh, with Collision. My name is Mike Harvey. I'm the head of comms uh, at, uh, at WebSummit, which is the, uh, uh, the company behind, behind Collision. Um, with me, it's great uh, honor to have John Schwartz. Uh, John, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm John Schwartz. I'm the San Francisco Bureau Chief of USA Today. I've known Mike since a couple of years. Um, it was a pleasure to meet him through Collision. I go to a lot of trade shows. I go to too many, I might argue, and um, this is not a suck up, but I, I do enjoy going to Collision because it's interesting, it's different, and it's not like your typical CES or even South by Southwest. That's very kind of you to say that, John. So, so, the, so what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about you know, how to hack the media. So we're going to talk about how startups and entrepreneurs need to think about uh, talking to people like John, who is going to be at Collision. Um, and um, and what the best what the best practices are, and perhaps give a few stories about what you know real life examples and so forth. So, so I mean, I think uh, probably my first question uh, to John um, is, you know, how much what sort of preparation, how much preparation do startups do when they think about trying to get earned media from from events like like the one? You know, the one thing that we would, we had talked about earlier was the best advice I could ever give to someone who wants to pitch me or anyone else at USA Today is to almost think like we do, kind of put yourselves in our position, uh, do a little research, find out what each of us is interested in, what our beat is, what we've covered typically at the shows, uh, what we've been writing about of, of, of note recently, and kind of figure out a way to pitch what your company does, say it's a computer security company, uh, come to me about Apple and the FBI because I wrote a lot about it, maybe too much about it. But a huge element of that story was the security angle. So you know that I'm interested in that. Come to me and say, hey, I read your stories and you might, looking forward, spinning it forward, you might consider this type of story uh, as it applies to not just this San Bernardino case, but future cases because there will be future cases. So if you're a security company, I would, I would suggest that. Uh, if you're, for me, Collisions taking place in the South. I used to live in the South. I went to college in the South. And I always found it very interesting because there isn't much of a presence of tech really in the South compared to the West Coast. So for instance, I'm going to this show interested in a company that has a major manufacturing facility in the South that's very high tech, that's trying to do something that hasn't been done in tech for 50 years. It's a dynamic Windows company called Vue. So I'm gonna write a story around that. I'm also interested in the juxtaposition of collision as perhaps setting up permanent residence in New Orleans, who knows, and at the same time of year as Austin and South by Southwest. We have a fresh new voice of Collision versus Austin, which has been around, and in a sense is getting a lot of user fatigue and reporter fatigue, it has been for years. So what I'm, just one thing, if you can just step back, think about how we cover shows. And, and, and one of the things that we're trying to do more of is we're trying to plan every day of a show. So for instance, at South by Southwest, we planned five reporters over four days. And each day we almost had a schedule of stories as they would land. So they all wouldn't land at the same time. We want to maximize our readership. We want to have a steady flow of stories. And that means doing a lot of prep work before the show. So a lot of us have multiple stories in mind and have written shelves of them before we go to the show. We look for companies that fit or that we can enhance the story with, in addition to the ones we've already talked to. And from there, we have this kind of attack or game plan on how to, how to cover some. Otherwise, it's total chaos and anarchy. So, I mean, you, you, uh, I think, I think the, the interesting thing there is it's very clear, and I don't know how many people realize this, but obviously the, the media company, the, the, the journalists that are coming to an event like this, they do a lot of prep in advance. Obviously, they get a lot of pictures in advance. So, you know, startup entrepreneurs who are doing their, doing their homework, they're, they're thinking about it in advance. And, and, and what you're saying there is that you do your prep and, and the entrepreneurs of the startups need to, who need to do their prep as well. What would your be around, you know, press, press, what, what's, what's a good, well-written press release like for you? You know, it, it's, it's, well, first of all, it's sent to the right person. So it's not kind of a, it, and it's also not sent to multiple reporters independently. Uh, the double dipping phenom or the double dipping strategy never works because the reporters evidently, 
they all talk to one another. So when you're being pitched the same story by someone separately, that always creates a little bit of extra work for everyone involved. You know, that happens quite more often than you would have yeah. could imagine so first of all just you know focus on one person who you think is the right person and if that person can help you that like me if, if you reach out to me and it's not my story i will tell someone else i work with about it so and have an idea of what we write about like some of us write just breaking news stories and some of us write analysis stories some of us write features so it depends on the type of story you're pitching i know it sounds a little bit confusing but it does really do make sense so, for instance, at South by Southwest, Marco De La Cava, who knows VR very well, he's the point person. And he's the person who wrote about that at CES and wrote about car technology at CES. So he writes about car technology at South by Southwest. One of the things I try to do is on through social media, I'll go on Facebook or Twitter and I will say, look, here is our team that's going to this event. Here are the four people. And here's what each of us is going to cover or try to cover. So I try to blast that out and it does work. It does work, not all the time, but it gives people an idea of what's going to interest us at a show because, you know, I, I don't, I actually like when somebody sends me a pitch and says, Hey, I've been reading your story. Here's your story. I, and it's obvious they've read it. It's like, Hey, what, what would interest you at this show? Um, what are you working on? What type of things or themes are you working on? But do that at least, a week or two before the show. Don't do it like in the days leading up to the show. Uh, Collision's been pretty good. I've actually had a, a fair number of companies who've been pitching me or people pitching me at least two or three weeks in advance to get on my radar and set up a meeting. That's the other thing. Try to set up a meeting with a reporter as early as possible for a show. Get in early, do not wait until the last minute. That's the classic mistake at CES where we get hit and inundated with multiple requests and our schedules have already been set. That's one other thing, we, as reporters here, we set up a, a database, um, like a Google doc, and everybody knows for, for South by Southwest, we knew where each reporter was gonna be all day, yeah, up until a reasonable hour. But we had an idea where everyone was gonna be, we use Slack, we're constantly in contact. Uh, and and it's, it, it never hurts to reach out as early as possible and be persistent about it, it's okay. And, and, and fair to say, say people listen. Um, um, get get the same sense that other other media companies operate in the same way. Um, so that you know, so, so sometimes you know, for quite a quite a the journalists have been coming to collision. I think probably a, a smaller smaller or one man band. But, but you know, despite the advice we can find out who that person is work out what they write about. Again, it's the thing uh, of, of doing the research in the front and then finding the, the way that you know, your interest is. The best thing is it's good to have, I think it needs to be short and sharp and pithy and as unself-serving as possible. They need to have the good story at the top, they need to have the headline, they need to have the bullet points, all that sort of thing. Yeah. You know this, there's, there's um, one thing, I know tech CEOs like this. I remember I, I learned this when I interviewed Bill Gates once. If you tell someone something they don't know about something that interests them, you immediately have their attention. I, so you say to me, oh, I saw this story you wrote. That's interesting, but did you know that blank, whatever, did you know that you missed this part? I mean, reporters actually like being told that they missed part of a story because they usually find really good sources who say to them, you, you know, that was interesting, but you might have considered doing this other part of the story, which might have which is just as interesting, or you didn't look at the angle. We, we, we like things that are a little bit off the beaten track, that are a little contrarian. Like if there's a, a, a series of stories that have the same type of conclusion, reporters do like the idea of writing something that's slightly different, like a different spin. Um, and that happens at all shows, especially keynotes. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is write a, a keynote story that reads like everybody else's. You want to give it a, like a little bit of a different take or a little bit of a different point of view or a narrative. We find often uh, for lots of startups and lots of entrepreneurs at our events, and I think Collision will be no exception, we find that the, the, very, uh, the very fact that they are going to pitch, they're going to have an ex exhibition booth, they're going to be standing there with their stand, they're going to be talking to a lot 
people. Obviously, they've got their elevated pitch, but, um, but it's a really good moment for people to try and hone their messaging um, and to, to try and get it as in a real life uh, situation to, to be able to, to, to. Yeah, that's that's true. It has to be really practical. I mean, for our readers, it has to be really practical. Like, so instance, you have a, you have something you want to pitch us that you think is going to revolutionize. I mean, or change the way people live. Or whatever, whatever it is, you think it makes it really compelling. I mean, you're using all these buzzwords on, intentionally. But if there is something that, like Uber is like a classic example. I'm not saying you have to have the next Uber, but if you do something that's a little bit different, that kind of does have an impact and ca can be proven to um, change or alter the way people do things, we like that. I mean, we like anything that every a normal everyday person on the street will walk by and in like I'm, I'm, I'm in a sense. I'm doing an elevator pitch myself. Yeah, so you're yeah. pitching me something, and I'm pitching it to an editor, who I have to, I have to convince. Well, we'll we do that story, and I'm also in a sense pitching to everybody we write for. I'm saying to them, here's a story. Here's why I want you to read it. This is why you're interested. And so I have to be interested in it. So they're interested in it. So they'll read it. Otherwise, there's no, really no point for any of us doing this. Sure. Let me ask you a little bit about the etiquette of, of uh, the media lounge or the media village. So the media village at uh, Collision is going to be behind the lounge just, just to the side of the main stage, uh, of center stage. Um, what's the what's the etiquette? You know, have you had you know bad experience or um, up to you? You know, when you're on deadline or stuff like that. What? How? How should it be? Well, that was classic. Like at CES, is that you would have a press badge, so you'd always turn it around backwards, so you couldn't see the press name because literally people would grab you and pull you into their booths. That used to happen. Uh, now it's even. I think it's. There's more. There are more companies. There's more money out there. The stakes are probably higher. Arguably, there are more reporters. Or well, there aren't as many reporters. In tech, there are more reporters, but in general, there aren't. So you go to one of these shows, and I like them. I do like the press room near the near all the companies because it gives me quick access to go back and forth between the two. It's really easy. It's all concentrated in one area. The only thing that is a little bit of a risk is that you have sometimes you have people from those companies who see these reporters congregated, some of whom are working on deadline. So it's hard. I mean, you want to be accommodating, but you don't want somebody to interrupt you while you're trying to write. I mean, that did happen a couple of times. Um, the vast majority of people are actually really good about this. They're respectful of your space and what you're trying to do. But there were some who were overzealous who were handing out press releases, literally, as, as you walked into the area. Or they would find a way to get inside. So consequently, I want to be out there. I want to be around the energy. I want to feel you know, what's going on and I want to see people. I want to meet as many people as I can. Um, so it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Um, I mean, I, I, my, it's from, yeah. I mean, from our point of view, from the religion, obviously. It's, yeah, exactly. We, we want, you know, we, we, it's a win-win for us is that we would love you as, as media folks to uh, write lots of stories and we would love entrepreneurs and startups that are coming to our event get coverage uh, about them as much as possible and so the, the truth is that there has to be there has to be uh, there is a limit to how much you guys can write and again you're going to write the best stories uh, I think uh, you know serendipity we always used to talk about South by Southwest as a show of serendipity but actually in a sense I thought Collision was more of that type of show because we're all together in the same kind of small confined space so we have no choice but to interact with one another which i do like and that didn't only apply on the show floor but it applied at the events you had after afterwards your parties or your mixers that's what i wanted it was all in one area and it, and through networking and, and i think like it's something at austin and i don't mean to to begrudge it but it's it, it's in a sense it's become so corporate and, and too big for its own good that it, in a sense you feel as if you're going from one corporate speak to another. At least at this show, you have a lot of entrepreneurs who passionately care about what they do and have a lot of interesting ideas and exchange of ideas among people in a, in yeah, well, they're, 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 you know, they're going to be a lot of, they're going to be a lot of uh, startup stands right, right outside of the, uh, where the media area is. And, yeah, yeah that, I, I'm fine with that. I actually like that. 
Yeah. Look, so let me ask you. Let me ask you this. So, um, overall, from an event like Collision, how many stories do you think you're going to write? How many? Uh, yeah. You know, I was thinking about that. That's a good question. That's a really good question. I was thinking about that today, and I was thinking at least. So I'm going to do a column. I'm going to do a voices column, which is what we do on page two A, which is kind of a first person account of something and how it, and the impact it might have on you. It's kind of an analysis, but it's kind of a little bit personal analysis. So I'm gonna do one of those the first day. I'm gonna write about this company in the South. I'm gonna to try to, I'm gonna meet some interesting people, I think, on some of the panels. And I'm gonna to go to a few of the panels and grab people as they come off stage if I can. So I'm thinking like at least four or five, six, at least maybe one or two a day, maybe seven. Right. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 that gives, I mean, that gives, that gives, that gives an idea of the, the sort of volume that's going to be done. But, um, um, I, I've actually got some questions coming in. We've just got a couple of minutes left. So, so uh, Megan Larson, thank you for your question, Megan. Says, John, how many stories do you pick up uh, on the show for versus the three range? What is the, what's the, what? Yeah, yeah, that's good. You know, it depends, but I would say a couple, at least a couple. I mean, I'm going there with an open mind thinking, you know, I'm not going to pre-process everything and, and have a st all these stories already set to publish before I even get there. So I'm thinking of it. I'm thinking of at least two or three, and I'm probably going to come across something really interesting over the course of a day, not just from one person, but from multiple people and piece it together and kind of step back and try to do what I think, Mike, you did was like you write a story with institutional knowledge. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of write something that is not from a press release, but is kind of a compendium of different ideas and different viewpoints and different technology and say, look, here's something that's kind of a, a theme or something that's uh, a trend. So I would, I would plan to do at least two of those types of stories, yeah. but I don't know what they're going to be. Yeah, I mean, John's referring that. So I used to be a technology journalist myself before I, before I stepped into the world of communication from VR. But, uh, and yeah, it's, so it's interesting. I was, you know, technology correspondent for the Times of London based out in Silicon Valley and went to lots of, lots of events, you know, along with John. Uh, and, you know, I wrote business stories. I didn't really write startup stories. And therefore... I don't either. That, that's... that's and yes. the aspect of so with people coming up to me and we just had a question from, um, from uh, Jacob Wright saying you know from a journalist perspective how much did the stage of the company matter in my in my time as a technology correspondent if you were very early stage unless you had a really blow away unusual probably socially important startup idea um, it, I wasn't really going to touch you um, because that's not what I did not what I was being asked to do by my by my editors. Um, and that research piece about, okay, you know, the WIC, so there, will, there will be lots of journalists at Collision who are who specialize in early stage. And you have to make sure as you, as an early stage entrepreneur, you have to make sure you know who you right. So you, you approach the right people. I mean, for, for, for USA Today, it's not so much early stage, is it? It's a little bit later on, it's a bit more businessy, isn't it? It is. It's like where I'm, I'm like you, I, I mean, I go there right, wanting to write as a business reporter more so than a product reporter or a startup reporter. I mean, we do write about startups occasionally, but we skew heavily towards more established companies and it depends on who's backing them. There's an interesting funding element or an interesting name behind the scenes who's mentoring or helping your company that is easy that's a great sell way to sell yourself say if you have mark benioff i'm just throwing this out mm -hmm. and he's investing your company in mentoring which he does quite a bit of we're going to be more interested because there's a possibility of us interviewing him and interjecting him or someone else into the story or if you're uh, in a field that's particularly hot like chatbots for instance you see all the coverage from f8 about chatbots and messenger if you have something where you're working with Facebook or you have an element of that story that you can extrapolate, we that's what we want to see. Yeah, I think AI, yes, that, the whole AI uh, messenger uh, AI is really exactly. now. And, and, you know, if you're a startup in that field, evolution, um, uh, you know, I, I'm guessing you're probably in with a better chance than, than most of coverage. We're beginning to we're beginning to run out of time uh, here. I just... Um, so there's one thing I just want to say from a sort of sort of collision point of view, which is, uh, and then I'll probably ask you, to, John, just your sort of last one minute golden piece of advice for, for all the startups and entrepreneurs listening to this. But so just from our point of view, from a collision point of view, 
One of the great ways to reach out and make connections, including with journalists, is to use the app, the app Collision. The, uh, so do uh, just advise everybody, download the app. Um, most, the vast majority of people coming to our events download the app, including the media, and they can be chatted with and directed to. Uh, and we're increasingly finding that's a really good way for people to connect and make, uh, and, do, and to do it in real life. Um, but so, John, um, one thing, so, so if there's one golden piece of advice for a startup entrepreneur thinking about approaching the media at San Diego, what would you think? Think, you know, it's, we love, the reporters love the word narrative. We use it in stories. We always talk about it. It's about storytelling. If, they, if you think you have a compelling or interesting story and you can spin that story in a way that we can reach a number of people and interest them and engage them, and you think about it from not only the point of view of the technology, but of the founders, and maybe there's a personal interesting story we have something called Change Agents, which is all about the idea of why a company was started. And usually it involves some sort of personal story. Maybe somebody had a learning disability or they had an illness in their family or they, they wanted to do, they had a personal frustration that made them create something to help other people who were in the same spot. That's what we need. We need something to grab somebody's attention and to keep their attention. Um, you know, if it's if it involves speeds and feeds, we're not really that interested. But if it's something that has a human element. I mean, that's really what I care about. I want to tell a story about people. I don't really like, I care about people more than I care about the products. Yeah. Thanks. That's good. Yeah. You got it. Take it. You put yourself down. Yeah. in the yeah. journey. Yeah. Good news is, yeah. within a uh, division, there are probably going to be, well, like hundreds and hundreds of journalists. We're not, uh, you know, we're hoping for uh, you know, 500 or more of the open beds. But we have journalists of all stripes. Um, and, you know, uh, our advice would be to go out and find the one, the right one, the one to know that story. So, uh, we'll wrap up there. Um, thank you so much for taking part. Uh, thank you. We'll look seeing you in uh, a week or so time now, we're going to ask now. Um, um, thanks so much for doing this again. You're a, you're a, you're a gentleman, and uh, I'll be see you later. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Else.